Hi class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Dr. Scott Adamson, and today we're gonna investigate a little switch from the calculus one that you have been studying previously. Previously, we've been starting with functions and exploring their rates of change. We call that the derivative. This time, we're gonna start with a rate of change and answer a question based on that given information. Here's the problem. Suppose a winter storm in northern Minnesota dropped on average 1.75 inches of snow per hour for eight hours. How much snow has fallen during the storm? So on the one hand, this is kind of a simple question to answer in the sense that if we're seeing 1.7 inches of snow per hour, inches per hour, for eight hours, we would have to multiply that by the eight hours to get the total amount of snow that has fallen. And when you multiply 1.75 inches per hour for eight hours, what you'll find is that 14 inches of snow has fallen during the storm. Now, this is the average snowfall rate. So this would just be an estimation for how much snow has fallen during the storm. We're gonna look at this in more depth later, but first, just to get your thinking, get your thinking and, and, and preparing you for where we're going with this, I want you to think about this in a more visual, or maybe we could call it a geometric sense. What if we looked at the graph of this snowfall? Since we're saying that the snowfall is, the snow is falling on average 1.75 inches per hour, we could see this graphically by just seeing this horizontal constant function, 1.75 inches per hour of snow falling for a total of eight hours. And what I want you to see in this case is, if we think about this, um, this rectangular area, this area here, could be a visual or geometric representation of what we've computed previously. Here's how. The area of this rectangle is, from our geometry knowledge, it's the length of its base, or its width here, times its height. But in terms of the quantities that we're keeping track of here, the base is a length of eight hours of elapsed time during this storm. The height of this rectangle is the rate of snowfall, which was reported 1.75 inches per hour. So if we took this 1.75 inches per hour and multiplied it by this base, eight hours, we see the same computation we saw earlier, but now we're connecting it to a visual or a geometric representation of what's happening here. So what we would say is the area underneath this constant function, the area of this rectangle is a representation of the total number of inches of snow that have fallen during the storm. Now that just gets us set up for a more um, realistic view of that snow doesn't usually fall for at least for eight hours at a constant rate. What if the rate of snowfall varies during that eight hours? So suppose we were uh, tracking this storm, we were measuring the snowfall, and we were able to compute or, or to record data every two hours. So initially, the rate of snowfall was this 0.75 inches per hour. And then two hours later, we recorded 1.75 inches per hour, etc., for each of the two hour increments of time. Now, what if we were to think about the total amount of snowfall during this eight hour storm? Rather than a, a constant 1.75 for the entire eight hours, we're gonna break this up into two hour chunks. So let's suppose, let's just imagine that for the first two hours, the snowfall remained at 0.75 inches per hour for the entire two hours. So instead of the bigger rectangle that we saw previously, we've got this two hour length of time rectangle and the area of this rectangle would tell us how much snowfall happened during that first two hours. And then we go to the next two hours. Let's just imagine that for the next two hours, the snowfall remained at this 1.75 inches per hour for the next two hours. And the area of this rectangle would show us how much snowfall, at least an estimation, for how much snowfall fell during that two hours. And we just continue that pattern. For the next two hours, from hours two to four, oh, 
I'm sorry, we're going from four to six now. Let's suppose that the, that the snowfall remained at a constant rate of 2.5 inches per hour for the next two hours. The area of this rectangle would be an estimation for how much snowfall fell during that two hours. And then for the last two hours, let's suppose that the snowfall, snowfall rate remained at 2.25 inches per hour for those last two hours. It would be this rectangle that would represent the total amount of snowfall during that two hours. So if we totaled up how much snow fell during this two hours, plus this two hours, plus this two hours, plus this two hours, we would get another estimation for the total amount of snowfall during the eight hours. But it might be more accurate since we're now getting the varied rates rather than just an average rate over the entire eight hours. So let's do it and let's see. So during this first two hours, Again, it's this area that's a visual or geometric representation of the total snowfall during those two hours because we're thinking about the length of the base, two hours, times the height of this rectangle, which is a rate in inches per hour. So if we multiply the two hours times the 0.75 inches per hour, and I'm just gonna vocalize the units here. This is in inches per hour, this is in hours. So when we multiply those together, we'll get 1.5 inches of snowfall during that first two hours. Continue that process. During the next two hours, we had an average snowfall of 1.75 inches per hour for two hours. When we multiply those together, we get 3.5 inches. And if we continue that for the third and the fourth rectangles, this third rectangle we said had a, a snowfall rate of 2.5 inches per hour for two hours. And this last one we said had a rate of 2.25 inches per hour for two hours. And so this would be five inches. This would be 4.5 inches. And the idea is to get the total amount of snowfall over the entire eight hours, we would just sum up these totals from each of the two hour sub intervals of those two hour increments. So if we add all this together, let's see, one and a half and three and a half, that would be five inches. Another five inches would be 10 inches, plus the 4.5, that would be a total of 14.5 inches of snowfall. Again, an estimation, an approximation of what really happened during this storm, but maybe a better estimation than we saw previously since we're now taking into account the varying snowfall rates. Now, all of this, this process that we just went through is known as the left-hand sum. The reason we call it the left-hand sum is, let's rewind back to the beginning. In this first two-hour um, increment of time, we had really two choices of rates. We could have chosen the rate on the zero hour, the initial rate, or we could have chosen the rate after two hours. We chose the rate on the left side of that subinterval. We chose this rate. Therefore, we're gonna call this the left-hand sum. For the next two hours, from hours two to four, we could have chosen either one of these rates. We chose the left-hand rate of 1.75. From four to six, we chose the left-hand rate of 2.5. From six to eight, we chose the left-hand rate of 2.25. We always chose the rate on the left side of that subinterval, and we see that in the heights. From zero to two inches, uh, two hours, sorry, we chose the rate here. From two to four, we chose the rate here. From four to six, we chose the rate here. From six to eight, we chose the rate here. So when you choose the rate on the left side of the subinterval and then total up the areas of those rectangles, in this case representing the total amount of snowfall, we're computing what's known as a left-hand sum to estimate the area, which in this case represents the total snowfall over eight hours. But could we also do a right-hand sum? In the next video, we're gonna explore the same context, but we'll uh, estimate the snowfall using a right-hand sum.